Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! This week has always been the programme that knows what tomorrow brings because, well, it's always tomorrow by the time it finishes. The team here are not afraid of the future, though I think they might be afraid of Andrew, judging by the graffiti on the toilet wall. For many people, though, the future is disturbing. Are they right to be worried? We've decided to predict what comes next and put tomorrow's world in this week's spotlight. <laughs> My question is, does our possession of nuclear weapons make us more secure or, and make the world more secure, yes or no? The decision on whether to renew our nuclear deterrent hinges not just on the threats we face today, but also on an assessment of what the world will be like over the coming decades. One thing they could agree on was that nobody has a crystal ball. In the end, the Commons voted to renew Trident. One away. But who can guess whether it's a nuclear war that we need insure against in the years to come? In a week when attackers in France and Germany used far less sophisticated weapons to terrorise, are the threats we face now more crude and far more unpredictable? But in an age of technological innovation, surely the future has never looked brighter for youngsters. Not according to the Resolution Foundation think tank who said this week that despite the perks they enjoy, millennials could become the first generation to earn less than their parents did. Breaking boundaries, Jean-Michel Jarre has always embraced the future with his pioneering brand of electronic music. But his new album now questions our relationship with technology. So is even he sounding a note of caution about what tomorrow may bring? And we are incredibly excited to be joined by the pioneering electronic musician Jean-Michel Jarre. Welcome to This Week. Thank you. Are you excited about the future or a bit scared of it? You know, when I started uh, in my career as a young musician, we, we had this kind of uh, uh, greed and, and quite optimistic vision for the future. We, we were all thinking that after 2001, I mean, cars would fly, Europe would be united and uh, uh, we'd be, we've been slightly disappointed. And actually, we lost, maybe after year 2000, this, uh, this uh, maybe appetite or, or hope for the future. In a sense, we have to reinvent the future. It's a little bit, little bit like the end of the 20th century was like the beginning of an, of an era with lots of hopes, and a little bit like if the, 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 the beginning of the 21st century would be like the end of something, that we have to, we have to re reinvent ourselves politically, socially, and, uh, and probably artistically as well. And how much of that do you think is to do with world events, and how much is that to do with you getting older? No, I, don't, I, I think that it's, uh, it's due to the, to, uh, the idea that, uh, f uh, and the fact that suddenly technology went so fast that we, uh, we have an ambiguous re relationship with the modern technology. On the one side, we have the world in our pockets through our smartphones. On the other side, we, we feel that we are spied on by the outside world. So we, we, we have this kind of anxiety for, for tomorrow. Well, on the subject of being spied on, tell me about your collaboration with Edward Snowden. Yes, actually, my, my last album, as you, you just said, is one of the recurrent themes of, of this uh, uh, project is our relationship with uh, technology. And, and I was recording this, uh, this project and uh, I've been really moved by this young man and he made me think uh, in a strange way to my mom. My mom was a great figure in the French Resistance and she went into the French Resistance in 1941. And, uh, and she always told me that uh, at that time that lots of French people don't want to, to remember. I mean, lots of people were considering resistance as troublemakers, even not as tra traitors, mm -hmm. because they were questioning the power in place. Mm -hmm. And uh, America and the United States have, has been founded on an act of resistance. But it was considered by the king of that, uh, at that moment uh, uh, as an act of treason. And uh, you, we were talking, uh, and we were all thinking about what's going on with Donald Trump on one side of the ocean and, uh, and uh, Marine Le Pen on the other mm. side, where lots of young people are rejecting the power in place because of, uh, they don't believe in politics anymore. 
And uh, I think when you meet a, a young individual man such as Edward Snowden, I mean, questioning the power in place, trying to tell the truth, to tell us the truth, uh, and questioning the, the power in place to, to improve his country, I think it's, a, it's an interesting reference. And uh, I've been quite, so I went to Moscow and to, to, to work with him. He's not an artist, he's not a musician, but I think it was, it was interesting to, uh, to um, in a sense, as an, an artistic way to, to uh, uh, not promote his idea, but actually the, the kind of action. We need people like, like him, I think, and, and as a kind of positive reference, even if he's quite controversial. Yeah. And thinking about um, the unity of Europe, which may just be slipping further in terms of timetable in 2001, um, we had Francois Hollande meeting our new prime minister today and uh, essentially saying, hurry up, get out the door, leave the EU. What do you think of that? I don't know. What to, you know, time will tell. I mean, I know that there is lots of um, worries on both sides of the channel and on, on both sides. But I, I think, you know, England has always been, as you know better than myself, a kind of am ambiguous relationship uh, towards the rest of Europe. I mean, since, since uh, Elizabeth I, I oh. mean, uh, actually, uh, England, you, you had a kind of... Uh, uh, distance and remote attitude towards the, the, towards the rest of Europe. And yes. by the end of the day, it has not been that bad for, for, the, for England and for the UK. And just before we go, tell me about your festival. I mean, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to tour with this new project. I mean, involving the, the, this collaboration with uh, Edward Snowden, not, not physically, but I mean, I mm. mean uh, and I'm in the next few hours doing a, a great concert in Jodrell Bank in uh, Manchester and, and playing uh, all the arenas like the O2 in London. And, and later on, I'm, I'm really looking forward to meet uh, the, the, the British audience and uh, uh, whatever Brexit uh, is on and off is, uh, and will exist, it's not, it's not uh, going to be the case for me and for, 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 for musicians and That's artists, right. obviously. Very good to see you. Thanks Thank so you much for much. doing that for us. That is uh, your lot for tonight. Until this week returns in September.